everyone and welcome back to Fully Playable Games. So on today's video, it is going to be my favourite video of the year. And this is going to be the birthday room tour. So this is the third birthday of Fully Playable Games. And yes, yeah, something that I started last year uh, is that on the anniversary of the channel, uh, I want to be doing a room tour. So the... Uh, channel actually started on the 1st of March uh, 2021, I think. I think that's right. <laughs> um, and yeah, so this is the, the third year of the channel. And I have to say, looking back at uh, where we started to where we are now, it is night and day. Um, the, the collection has grown immensely. Um, we have got some absolutely amazing bits in the collection. A lot of the bits that I've got, I never even ever dreamed of getting into the collection. So just so happy to have the collection as it is. And yeah, I have spent the last week or so going through, uh, completely sorting the games room. Um, what I do is this time every year, um, I will go through, I'll literally pull everything out. Uh, it all gets sorted, all gets alphabetized, and yeah, just uh, makes it look as good as it possibly can be. So let's, let me get switched over to the other camera and then we'll get in and have a look at the games room. So starting off outside of the games room, uh, I've got a couple of bits on the door. So the first one is the Sonic uh, sprite print that we picked up. Uh, I think this was from Lazy Bones last year. And then I got this sign for Christmas from the Little Un. Uh, so yeah, that was, that's been put proudly on the games room door. But yeah, with that, let's get in and have a look at the room itself. So starting off uh, at my desk, uh, so this is the area that I've got set up for when I'm doing all my repairs uh, and then as I pan across and I've got my PC uh, that I use for quite a bit actually. So all my editing's done on here, um, <clears throat> I set up consoles, uh, most of my consoles are played at this desk um, and then I use this screen. Uh, for playing them just because I haven't got the room for a proper TV in here So that's the only way I can get set up and then what I've done is, is I've actually got all the cables Ready to go so I can just plug everything straight in um, And then yeah, so everything's uh, played here. I use the capture cards. Uh, so I've got just here So yeah, that's that and then we'll move up To the top here and we'll start off with my Big box PC collection. No, we won't because I've missed this out. So this is a, and I can't remember what it's called. It is a Fender. That was it, a Fender um, Jaeger. Uh, so this is for Rock Band 4 on the Xbox One. Um, I managed to pick this up at a boot fair for five pounds. And when I got home, I actually looked and it is extremely sought after. It goes for about 150 to 200 pounds. Um, and yeah, I'm not not a massive player of any of the sort of guitar hero or rock bands or anything like that now um, But I just didn't want to sell it um, Because it's not the sort of thing I'm going to find again So that's why I decided to add it into the collection So now back to the, uh, the big box PC games So we have been on an absolute rampage with the big box PC games of late and yeah looking at the collection i've currently got 153 games uh in the collection that's across both big box uh dvd cases and um dual cases as well so yeah whenever i see a pc game that i don't have in the collection i will always pick it up and add it in especially if it is big box so yeah i am getting to the point though now where i'm gonna have to look at uh probably downsizing this a bit 
maybe putting a couple of the games into storage um, or looking for some extra space. Then moving down, we have got my Virtual Boy. So this was something that I picked up last year. Um, it come with two games. It come with Mario Tennis and Galactic Pinball. And then recently we picked up Vertical Force. And then just next to that, we've got a whole load of my boxed Game Boy games. Uh, so this is Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and original Game Boy. Um, yeah, I don't have too much of these, or too many of these at the moment. So yeah, it is something I would like to build up, but yeah, it's just as and when I come across them. Then up the back there, we've got a whole load of box consoles. Uh, so we've got a uh, DS, DS uh, XL up the back there, new 3DS, my original DMG Game Boy from when I was a kid, uh, the pink uh, DS that we picked up a little while ago. I mean, that come from uh, the Sunday Boot Fair. Then we've got the 3DX, 3DS XL that we picked up from Nikki. And then we've got my my little Pokemon uh, collection, so to speak. So that's a couple of the Pokemon Game Boy Colors, along with some of the actual Game Boy game carts. And then just behind them, uh, if I can squeeze through. So I've actually got a brand new in-box uh, Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo and Nintendo Entertainment System Mini. And then some recent additions to the collection. Uh, we've got some of my gaming watches. Uh, I think this one I've had for a while, um, but these two are definitely new for the collection. And then a couple of Game Boy Pockets just up the back there. Then, moving down to the next shelf, we have got my Atari shelf. So, I've got a couple of my Atari consoles here. So, we've got my 2600, my 2600 Junior, my Lynx, and then my Jaguar as well. And then down the end here, most of the games are for the 2600. Uh, but we have got one of the Lynx games up there and a Jaguar game. Now, I have actually got another boxed Lynx game. Uh, it's actually in one of my drawers that we'll get to later on. Uh, but, yeah, the reason it's in there is because the box isn't that brilliant. Uh, so what I've actually managed to do is actually ordered it this morning, uh, a couple of the box protectors. So they should be coming within the next couple of days so I can get those put in. Then, moving along to... Uh, so this was a new addition for last year. This is my Xbox bookcase. So up the top there, we've got a couple of my Xbox consoles. So we've got my original Xbox One, which is the Titanfall edition. Uh, we've then got the uh, Xbox Series S that we picked up from one of my work colleagues. And then just at the back there, we've got my original Xbox 360 as well. So this one I picked up from Game. And yeah, I've had that. Didn't actually get it for release. Um, it was something that I got probably about 18 months, a year, uh, 18 months to two years uh, before the uh, PS4 come out and the Xbox One come out. Then, moving down, we've got some of my original Xbox games. So at the moment, these are all double stacked because unfortunately I don't have the room uh, to get everything out on sort of individual shelves unfortunately but for the xbox um, i've actually got 200 games in the collection for the original xbox and yeah this one just here this is actually a, a double pack that we've got with sega gt and jet set radio um, that was actually a bundle game that didn't actually originally come with a um any cover art but I have got a piece of cover, a custom made bit of cover art to put into it. Um, I just haven't managed to print it off yet. Uh, so yeah, we've got 200 uh, games in the Xbox collection, which is really good. Uh, one of the games that I actually, or oh, there's two games that I originally bought my uh, original Xbox for. The first one's just up here, and that is Doom 3. And then the other one was Outrun 2. But, as I say, over the course of collecting, we've got some absolutely amazing games and some that I really enjoy playing. Then, moving on, we go on to the Xbox 360. So, for the Xbox 360, um, I've currently got about 304, oh, sorry, 430 games uh, in the collection. So, you see there, we've got it over four shelves. And, yeah, just a whole variety. Once again, 
Uh, they are all double stacked. But you'll see there, there's quite a few collections um, and some runs. So one of the ones I'm actually quite proud of is the run of FIFA games. So you see there, we've got from FIFA 06 right the way through to FIFA 17. So the only one that I'm actually missing is FIFA 18 boxed. Um, I do have the disc, but unfortunately just don't have the box. Then moving down, uh, so we've got some Maddens, the Mass Effects. So I'm currently actually playing uh, Mass Effect on the PS4, the, um, the Collection Edition. Not the Collector's Edition, the, uh, the one with all three games in. <laughs> Portal 2 there, another absolutely amazing game that I love. Then what I've done this year is I've actually, as well as alphabetizing the collection, I've also separated it out. So you'll see here just at the end, uh, these are all of my promo copies. Uh, or sort of promo copies, bundle copies, um, and I think even the Michael Jackson experience is a charity copy, if I remember rightly. No, nope, that's promotional. I think one of these is actually a charity copy. I can't remember which one it is. Um, what I'll do is I'll have a look and I'll put it up on the screen. Um, and then we've got my uh, Xbox 360 Classics. So that is um, Microsoft version of the sort of Platinum games. And then we've got some of my multi-packs. Um, I've put the Burger King games together as well. Unfortunately, I can't play them at the moment uh, because I haven't got a 360 that is capable of playing NTSC games. And then moving down, we go on to my Xbox One games. And for the Xbox One, we've got 133 games. So you see here, we've got my Master Chief holding the latest controller that we got in the collection. Uh, which was the red uh, Xbox One controller. So I'm going to lift Master Chief out of the way for a second. And then just down here, actually, we've also got another Master Chief uh, item, shall we say. Uh, so this is a bottle of LucasAid uh, advertising the Halo Infinite. Um, you will see it is completely discoloured. <laughs> it's never been opened. Um, but, yeah, I've just decided to sort of keep it sealed. Uh, I think it's a nice little addition to the shelf. And then, yeah, so uh, once again, everything's alphabetized. The only thing that's out of order is obviously the Master Chief Edition. Um, but yeah, some really good games there. Uh, I'm trying to think what ones we've recently been playing. Uh, I've actually been playing more of my PS5 uh, than anything else. Once again, I've got a nice little run of the FIFA games. So we've got from FIFA 14 uh, right the way through to 22. Um, but yeah, we're missing 15 and 16, so I have to make that a bit of a priority this year. And yeah, so as I say, I, I do really enjoy my Xbox, uh, my Xbox One. Uh, I will admit that is a game. Where is it? I've just seen it. There you go, Recall. Really enjoyed that game. But yeah, so a whole load. So that whole bookcase is dedicated to uh, the Xbox. So that was the, the bookcase that we added to the collection last year. And yeah, really, really happy to have it in the collection. Then moving on, uh, we have got my Atari snowboard. So yeah, I picked this up from a charity shop and it's been really difficult to find any information about it. Um, I am going to try and actually reach out to the company that makes it or made it um, because some people have actually told me that it's extremely rare um, from the bit of information that I have been given on it is is that it's one of ten and they were originally made for the Atari booth at one of the very early E3s um, and it was advertised in one of the snowboarding games so yeah I am going to make that a point this year to try and get a bit more information on this snowboard but yeah five pound i paid for that and yeah it is just an amazing addition to the uh to the games room then i've also managed to get one of my uh pokemon standees up on the wall uh this was one that i've actually had for a while this wasn't one from the uh the recent pokemon pickups uh but yeah i think this was bought about two years ago um off dan at the sunday boot fair so yeah really happy to actually finally have that on display 
then moving on we have got my so this is my fallout and my resident evil shelf so starting off with a fallout section uh we've got my collector's edition of fallout 3 uh, i've actually got the collection edition of new vegas just behind there we've got my pit boy from my fallout 4 4 fallout 4 pit boy edition um, and then this is a um, phone or controller holder that I bought. I managed to find it. It was new in box, but unfortunately, it fell off one of my shelves the other year and broke through. I'm absolutely gutted about that. I really am. Uh, but yeah, it is still sort of in the box. It's not actually been taken out of the box, and that's the way I'm intending on keeping it. Then we've got my little bit of Resident Evil bits. Uh, so we've got Resident Evil Dark Slides Chronicles uh, for the Wii. That's complete with the Zapper. Uh, then we've got the GameCube Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Controller. So I actually picked this up brand new. Um, and this was actually from a shop in Maidstone. It was called Arcade Heaven. Um, it shut down years ago and I'm absolutely gutted that it's not there anymore. Because if, if it was, I would be a regular customer there. Um, all day, every day. Um, really, really gutted it's not there anymore. But, uh, yeah. And then we've got the Resident Evil keys that we picked up recently. Uh, I just think they, they really sort of fit in that little slot quite nicely. Um, and, yeah, just finish off the Resident Evil part of the shelf. Then, moving along, I'm just going to move my light as we do this. <laughs> so, we have got my Sega shelf. So, this is... Uh, one of the shelves, so originally this was a Pokemon shelf, um, but I cleared it off because I wanted to put some of the Sega console boxes up there. So we've got the Mega Drive box that I managed to pick up from Lazy Bones. We've got my Mega CD box that we got a couple of years ago. Uh, we've got the Sega Game Gear that is complete in box. And then the Sega Pico. But I will say, I don't know whether I said it in the video where we picked up this box. Um, I'm not sure if this is an actual Pico box or if this is a display box. Because when I try to fit the, fit, fit the Pico in here, um, it just doesn't fit in. Um, so yeah, I don't know whether that is an actual genuine box for the Pico um, or if it is a display box. But even, even still, um, it, I really like the way it looks on the shelf. And then just up the top there, we've got my Sonic uh, cap. Uh, that's the Sonic and Coke uh, promo cap. So moving down, we go on to my Pokemon shelves. And yeah, across this top shelf here, uh, we've got a whole load of booster boxes, uh, elite trainer boxes, as well as the, uh, the tag team uh, gift box, I think they're called, at the back there. Uh, up the top here, these are a couple of... I'm just going to move that. These are a couple of the Pokemon uh, World Championship packs from London. So this is the 2022 edition. Um, there was four different versions released. And I managed to pick up all four. I think I've got one additional one as well uh, that I was going to open up. Uh, so yeah, we've got that. Then moving down, we have got my Pikachu N64. Um, it is all working, everything works with it. I've hit that up a couple of years ago. Then we've got the Pokemon Pikachu, uh, what I would call Tamagotchi. Uh, once again, all working. Um, it was actually, when I first got it, um, it had never been used. Still had the tag uh, in the back of the, um, the unit. Um, and yeah, it had never been used. And then just behind this, uh, we've got some of the... Uh, sparkling water cans. So these are Ocean Bomb Sparkling Water. Uh, these were sort of Japanese exclusives. Um, I think I am actually missing a couple. There's, uh, I think it's about two or three that I'm missing uh, to have the full set. Um, they go for about six or seven pounds each. So I probably will look to pick those up at some point so that we can complete the set. Then I've got a couple of boxes of my Pokemon cards here. I'm actually in the middle of doing a massive sort out of my Pokemon collection, uh, going through all the cards, getting them all sorted out and organized. Um, this is just a very small portion of them. Uh, what we've got, two, four, six, eight, nine boxes there. I think when I counted the other day, um, I had about 23 of these sort of, these sort of size boxes uh, filled with cards. 
So yeah, big amount to sort through, but obviously I wanted to I put that aside uh, to focus on the game room tour. And then one of my recent additions was my Pokemon Go Plus. Uh, really wanted to get that into the collection so that we had it. Then we got a couple more of my um, graded cards. I I will grab graded cards as and when they come up, um, but I don't actively go out looking for them. Um, and as I say, it's more a case of cards that I like the look of uh, more than anything else. Then we've got a couple of the premium tournament collections. We've got Professor Juniper and the Marnie one. Uh, so this one actually took me quite a while to get hold of uh, because by the time I was sort of aware of it, um, it sold out and uh, it just got really expensive. Then at the back there, we've got a Celebrations uh, Special Collection. Uh, that's the Pikachu edition. Just in front here, we've got the Charizard um, Sword and Shield Ultra Premium Collection. Um, I actually managed to get two of these. So I have got one uh, that I can open, um, as well as keeping that one sealed. And then just at the back here, we've got the Pokemon uh, Charizard Collection as well. So yeah, a whole load of Pokemon bits. As I say, this is... Uh, these two shells probably amass 30% of my collection. Um, I've got about seven boxes in the bedroom of all brand new Pokemon stuff that I just don't have the room to display in here, as well as all of the Pokemon store displays that I've picked up recently. So next up, we're moving on to my console area. And we're going to start off with this top shelf, which originally was my... Atari shelf, but this then got reprovisioned into essentially my Japanese shelf. So we start off with my Famicom. We've then got my Super Famicom. We've got a Japanese N60, not a Japanese N64, we've got a Japanese GameCube, um, which actually has come in really handy because when I've picked up a couple of the NTSC games, I'm just going to move my light across a bit. Uh, when I picked up a couple of the N NTSC games, the, the US ones, um, they when I put them into my PAL uh, GameCube, they actually end up running fast. So what I can do is I can still use my multi-region disc, put them in here, and then it will run at normal speed. So that's been really good. We've then got my Japanese um, Sega Saturn, but this one is really unique, and I got this as a 40 Saturn uh, of John at the market. But when I got it back to the car, and let's try to get it off, um, I actually looked at the side of it, and you'll see there, there's actually a Cygnosis. Um, so it's a Cygnosis uh, PsyQ development system. Uh, so basically with this, I am missing a couple of bits, which are, extremely difficult to find so there's a cart that goes in the back um, and then there's also a uh, card that goes into the side so like a, um, a computer card um, and they are really really difficult to get hold of i would absolutely love to be able to get hold of them and actually have this complete um, but yeah unfortunately they are so rare i think there's something like 10 uh, no i think it might be something like 100 in existence um, but yeah really really difficult to find out there um so yeah it's something i will keep my eye out for and hopefully sometime in the future i'm able to get hold of one but other than that i am just over the moon to have something that is so unique uh in the collection then we move on to my sega sg1000 mark ii so this is the second home console that sega ever made and yeah unfortunately i've not been able to play it um, because it only has rf out and I currently don't have a way to display uh, the Japanese frequency. So it is something I'm looking at doing. Um, but at the moment, it's, I've just not been able to find a way to do it yet. So if anyone actually is able to play um, Japanese RF um, consoles, um, then let me know. As I say, I know that I can get a Japanese VHS. Uh, but just finding one for a, really, uh, for a good price is really difficult. Then moving down, we get onto the Xbox shelf. So we've got my original Xbox. Uh, so yeah, this one, this was actually the one that I originally picked up uh, with a couple of the games. And yeah, it does need recapping. Um, I haven't managed to sort of recap it yet. Um, then we've got my white Xbox 360. 
Uh, this is the one that I, whenever I catch a gameplay footage, this is the one that I'm always using. And then finally, we've got my Xbox uh, Series X. Uh, this, out of all the Xboxes, this is the one that's used most. Um, yeah, I love playing on this, as well as my PS5. Uh, these are the two consoles that I really enjoy playing. Then, moving down, we start off with the PlayStation shelf. So, just at the back here, we've got a whole stack of the original uh, P uh, PlayStation. So these are all different models of the original PlayStation. Um, we've got each of the three main variants. So um, what I'll do is let me lift off my PS2 and I'll rotate them around so you can actually see. Ugh. There we go. So. Uh, we've got one down the bottom here. I can never remember the model numbers, so I will chuck the model numbers up on screen. Uh, so this was the first version or first variant of the original PlayStation. So this one comes with the um, the component out as well as the parallel port. The second model, they removed the component uh, option, but it still had the parallel port. And then up the top here is actually the final version, which they removed the expansion port. Um, yeah, this one, these these two are both uh, different models, but they're obviously of the, the same uh, variant. Um, yeah, I think I sort of come across this one and then noticed that it was a model that I didn't have in the collection, so just put it into the pile. Uh, I'm just going to push those back there for now. There you go. <laughs> um, and then just behind my Pokemon mug, which was another thing that my little one bought me. And yeah, uh, that will always stay in the game room. So at the back there, we've got my original PS1. Uh, so that is the slim version of the original PlayStation. Uh, that is actually chipped. Uh, I got that chipped back in the day when I had it and yeah it's actually proven really good because obviously i can now play um ps1 games from anywhere in the world as well so yeah that's good and then i've got my ps mini there as well uh i will admit i've used it once or twice um but yeah don't really play that but in addition to that one i have also got another ps mini there um that one is complete in box so that's never been unboxed um and yeah, I'm probably just going to keep it like that. Then moving forward, we've got my PS2. This is, once again, this is my original PS2 uh, from when I was younger. Uh, this was bought... Uh, it was actually bought about a year after the PS2 come out because originally um, I was waiting for the, uh, the original Xbox. Um, but when I saw it, um, so I just didn't like it. And then what I'd done was I actually got my dad to uh, take me down uh, to the local shopping centre. It was actually Boxing Day. Uh, and I used my Christmas money to actually buy uh, this PlayStation. So, yeah, it is something that stayed in the collection. Um, I've never sold or traded any of my consoles, my games, anything like that. I mean, the only thing that I've ever sold um, that I probably regret now, sort of, is I originally had the screen adapter for the original PS1, uh, or for the PS1, sorry. Um, it wasn't the official Sony one, it was an aftermarket one. Um, so, yeah, I'm sort of on the fence as to whether I'm happy that I've sold it or I'm upset, but <laughs> yeah. Then, next up, we move along to the PS3. Um, so this isn't my original PS3. My original PS3 is actually, you'll see that in a minute, it is back in its original box. Um, but yeah, this one was one that I've picked up over time and yeah, it's just basically gone onto the shelf and it's the one that I use whenever I'm capturing footage. Um, I don't have my PS4 out, uh, because obviously everything I can play on the PS4, I can play on the PS5. Bar one game, I've only ever come across one game that I can't play on the PS5. Um, and we'll get to that when we get to the PS4 games. Um, but yeah, once again, I absolutely love my PS5. It is something I play more often than anything else, uh, because as well as a couple of the games that I'm playing through at the moment, being PlayStation exclusives, um, I also play with the Little'un. Uh, so the Little'un likes to play Minecraft, 
uh, and we get into we've got sort of shared worlds that we we go through then just behind the ps5 we've got my ps vita collection uh, so we've got my complete inbox vita as well as my sort of small stack of vita games um, it is something i want to get some more i do want more vita games but um, it's not something you find too often at the boot fairs um, and if you do they tend to be quite overpriced and then just down the bottom here actually this was something that we picked up from the manston boot fair last year um, and this is actually the playstation phone so it does need a bit of tlc the the case is sort of coming apart a bit so yeah i need to get in and sort of do some repair work on it but it does all work um i've had it powered on and everything like that um so yeah it is something that i'm glad to have in the collection really gutted because actually i think it was about five or six years ago i actually had two of them complete in box um and i ended up selling them and yeah once i started building the collection i was gutted because i really wish i'd got them back um but at the time i wasn't collecting as hard as i am now so moving down we get on to the nintendo shelf so we start off we've got my uh, nes so this was picked up uh i think it was about was it last year or was it a year before can't quite remember but i know that um this actually come about from a discussion shall we say with the wife so she wanted a new pair of boots um she wanted a new pair of ugg boots when we were out shopping one day and i was like you can have a pair of ugg boots but i want an nes and yep i and she ended up getting her boots so i ended up getting my nes <laughs> it's all it's all about compromises that's all that's all i can say <laughs> then we've got my um super nes uh this was one that i've had for years um i originally bought this to play street fighter 2 um i was quite lucky because when i bought this it actually come with uh street fighter 2 as well i will admit i can't remember where i got it from i've had it that long um that i don't remember where it come from then we've got my uh gamecube uh, so this was actually a gift <laughs> so i actually gave this uh to my brother uh one year on christmas and yeah he played it for a little while we had a couple of the games um and then he just really stopped uh i think mean, once he sort of moved out um I, he just stopped playing games so i ended up buying it back off him uh, a few years later and sort of added into the collection um, i've still got the original box for it as well uh, so yeah really really chuffed to have that in the collection and obviously the really big part of this is obviously it's got the game boy player as well and yes i do have the disc so whenever you see me capture footage for uh game boy game boy color or game boy advance uh this is how i'm capturing it it's always on this then we've got my n64 uh so this is actually my no this is my first n64 um so i've got two uh we've got this one which has actually got the original sticker still on the expansion um the expansion card thingy whatever it is um and this was one that i wanted to keep sort of pristine so what i want to do is if i ever manage to get a n64 box uh, this is going to be the console that i'm going to be putting into it um and yeah just this has literally been kept as is not done anything to it obviously i have got another one um which is on top of the set of drawers that we'll get to in a bit uh which has um my expansion uh, expansion card in it um and that's the one that i tend to use whenever i'm capturing footage and then we've got, got my oled switch uh which the wife got me for christmas not this year gone the year before um and yeah that gets played extensively um and since getting this i've really been building up my switch collection as well then moving down we get on to my sega shelf so we start off with my original master system uh, i've bought this from ebay it's about six months ago um it does need a bit of work so i just haven't had a chance to uh, have a look at it yet um but once i can uh, then that'll be great because then i'll have it uh, all working and ready to go uh, then up the back there um, i'm hoping that you can see if i can just adjust i'll just adjust my light 
Uh, come on. There we go. <laughs> There we go, that's a bit better. Uh, so at the back there we've got two Master System 2s. Uh, one of them is the Alex the Kid version, the other one is the Sonic version. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head which one's which. Um, but yeah, managed to pick those up at sort of different points last year. Then we've got my Dreamcast. Uh, so this is one, another one that I've had for absolutely years. Uh, when I originally got it, it actually came with a CD wallet uh, filled with games and but unfortunately they were all copies um, but obviously with the Dreamcast being so easy to um, bypass the copy protection um, that's what pretty much everyone done and unfortunately that was one of the reasons why uh, the Dreamcast died the way it did which is really unfortunate because it is such an amazing console so ahead of its time uh, and yeah really such a shame that it didn't get the love and support that it really deserved and another Sega console that I think didn't get the appreciation that it deserves is uh, my actual, my PAL Sega Saturn. So, as you've seen, I've got the Japanese one at the top. Uh, this is the um, Mark II uh, PAL version. Uh, you can tell them apart because the Mark I has sort of elongated buttons, uh, whereas these ones are round. Um, yeah, this is the one that I play whenever I'm playing Saturn. Uh, I'll always use this, um, even if I'm playing any of my Japanese games, uh, it's always on this console that I play them. Um, but obviously, as well, I do also have a PAL Mark 1 console as well. Um, at the moment, I just haven't, haven't found the room to put it in. Hopefully, I'll be able to try and get it at the back there sometime. And then lastly, we've got my Mega Drive. So this is my Mega Drive with my Mega CD and my 32X. This is actually the original Mega Drive that I had uh, as a kid. Uh, the Mega CD is obviously a recent addition because I didn't have one of them when I was younger, uh, as well as the uh, 32X. And by far, my favorite retro console. I am definitely a Mega Drive kid, uh, always have been and always will be. It's a console I absolutely love collecting for and any time I see a Mega Drive game that I don't have in the collection, regardless of what it is, I will always pick it up. So yeah, absolutely love the Mega Drive and will be actively collecting for it whenever I can. So the next part with Games Room we've got is my Nintendo shelf. So at the moment it has just got a load of random Nintendo bits. Uh, we've got the box to my Switch up the back there, uh, my question mark block, and up the back there we've got a couple of Wii games. Um, I, I think eventually I'm going to be taking all of this down and replacing this with some console boxes uh, as and when I pick them up. So yeah, fingers crossed in the future. Uh, we'll be able to start getting some console boxes up there. Also, at the back, um, I've also got my copy of Mario Paint for the Super Nintendo. Um, that is complete in box, but unfortunately, it is the NTSC version, which I didn't realise at the time when I bought it. Then, moving down, we have got my Switch shelf. So, at the moment, I have got 45 Switch games in the collection. And yeah, whole range. In most of them, I'd say, are sort of Pokemon. I think mean, that's the biggest selection of games that I've got in there. Uh, what I will say is my Legend of Zelda Joy-Cons. Uh, those are brand new. I've never opened them. And they have gone up massively in price. I looked a couple of months ago. And I think I, I bought them brand new. Uh, so I think I paid about 60 quid for them. Uh, they're now well over £120 to buy brand new. So really chuffed I grabbed them when I did. Uh, so yeah, that is my Switch shelf. I've got a couple of special editions just behind uh, uh, Mario. Uh, so we've got Sonic Mania, Tales of Symphonia, which I did not enjoy at all. And then Flashback, that's the Flashback remake, which I actually did really enjoy. I played that originally on the Xbox. Then, moving down, we have got my PS4 collection. And I have to say, this is a collection that has been growing leaps and bounds recently. Uh, so, currently, we've got 181 games in the PS4 collection. 
And yeah, it just I just be, seem to be coming across loads of PS4 games, which is absolutely brilliant because I love collecting for the PS4. And the fact that I can play pretty much all the games on the PS5 is an extra benefit. But what I did say earlier on, actually, was uh, so far I've come across one game that I couldn't play on the PS5. And that is Life is Strange. So I absolutely love this game. I originally played it when it first came out on Steam and was able to pick up the limited edition for the PS4 uh, sometime last year. Um, it is an amazing game, but it will only play on the PS4. Um, I can't get it to run on the PS5. So yeah, bit of a shame there. Then going down to the other shelf, we've got my PS5 collection. And at the moment, it is really sparse. So we've got 21 PS5 games in the collection. And yeah, it's it's a console that I'll pick. If, if I come across something and I haven't got it and I want to play it, I tend to pick it up. I will say a lot of my PS5 games are still sealed. Um, so if we look here, we've got things like Chernobylite. Um, that was a game that I wanted to play for absolutely ages. Um, just haven't had the time to play it yet. Uh, Daymare, that was something I ordered from Amazon and just, uh, yeah, it sort of come, I'd forgotten about it and yeah, just haven't had a chance to even look at it yet. Uh, Dead Space, once again, another game that I'd sort of pre-ordered uh, with the intent of playing, um, but just haven't had the time to do it yet. Dying Light 2, another one that was really high up my list. I was desperate to play it, but just haven't had the time. Uh, Ghostbusters, I actually bought this thinking it was the other like the original ghostbusters game just a, a remaster um didn't realize that it was an online game uh so that's the reason that one hasn't been opened um immortals uh phoenix rising uh once again uh i think i got that off glenn at the boot fair and yeah just really bought it to add it into the collection uh, Lego 2K Drive, so we picked that up in the last game, uh, the last uh, video, sorry. The um, reason that hasn't been opened is because currently it's available on PS Plus, so I'm playing it digitally at the moment. <clears throat> Martha is Dead, another one that I really wanted to play, but just haven't had the time. Uh, Marvel Avengers, so this one, I think I bought it, and I bought it cheap at game. And I don't know if it's still if you can still play it or not. Um, I think they've shut down the servers for it. So yeah, I'll need to find out about that one. Uh, Miles Morales. I reason I haven't played that is because I wanted to actually play through the original Spider-Man first, um, and this one actually come with my PS5. Uh, Resident Evil Village. I think with this one, I played the de I played through the demos when they were being released, and yeah, I don't know. I just haven't felt the urge to play it yet um which is a shame because i'm a massive fan of resident evil but um oh no that was it i wanted to play through um the resident evil 7 first uh because i'd only ever played it up until a certain point because originally when i was playing it i was playing it in vr and obviously with resident evil uh village that is the um the second game in the ethan, ethan winters uh, series so yeah i wanted to finish the other resident evil first um yeah resident evil 7 uh and so that's why i haven't played that yet uh return to monkey island that was another one that i had sort of pre-ordered on amazon forgotten about um until it showed up um i think actually that come over from the states uh then we've got shantae uh this is risky's revenge uh i think yeah this was one the I don't think I got this from Limited Run. I think this was bought... Oh, no, this was bought off Amazon, I think. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Shantae games, obviously, I love Half Genie Hero. Um, I've played uh, this one briefly. Um, but, yeah, uh, I'd rather sort of keep them sealed until I'm able to play them. Uh, and then the final one was uh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. Uh, the reason that's sealed is because I've currently got it on uh, Xbox Game Pass. So I've been playing it on there first. So, yeah, as I say, I'd say most of my PS5 collection is still sealed. 
Um, but there, I will get to them uh, as and when I can. Then, moving down, uh, we go on to my PSP section. And I have to admit, I um, I haven't sorted this section out, actually, before uh, filming the video. So I think this is one of the only sections in the games room that isn't in alphabetical and type order. Uh, currently, we've got 76 games in the PSP collection. Uh, we've got a couple of different models of the PSP itself. Uh, all of them work. As far as, as far as I'm aware, they all work. Um, and then we've also got the little PSP camera as well. Uh, picked that up. I think I saw it just randomly on eBay uh, and thought it was sort of so cool. Uh, I hadn't seen it before, so I decided to pick it up. And then we've got my sort of surplus supply of um, PlayStation. So we've got both my silver PS2s. Uh, this is the little one's old um, PS4 Slim. We've got the white PS4 that we picked up from the charity shop. And then we've got my uh, PSX. Um, I have started filming a repair video for this, but it didn't quite go exactly to plan. So I've got to uh, revisit that when I can. Uh, that video will be out sometime in the future. And then finally, we've got my copy of Book of Spells on the PS3. Uh, I think if I remember right, this is like a Harry Potter themed um, book that uses the um, the, the motion uh, wands or whatever you call them. Uh, and the eye camera. And then moving down, we've got my shelf of... Uh, VHS, DVDs, and uh, Blu-rays. Uh, a lot of these are sort of retro cartoons, anime, um, and everything like that. Um, so you'll see here we've got a couple of anime, uh, some retro uh, cartoon series, which I watched when I was growing up. Uh, Bike and Mice from Mars. We've actually got a couple more to add into this now. Uh, Animaniacs, absolutely brilliant. We've got the real Ghostbusters. So this one, I actually got it, and it is still sealed. So I put it into a protective case uh, to sort of keep the seal intact. But yeah, really, really impressed to get that. Surprisingly enough, even sealed, it doesn't go for that much. Then with the Blu-rays, um, I tend to sort of try and get any video game-related film uh, that I can. Uh, I will pick them up on Blu-ray. I think the latest one that we've got, we've got Super Mario there. Uh, I have got Five Nights at Freddy's. The little one's got that in uh, their room. Uh, I mean, I still need to pick up Sonic 2, actually. I haven't got that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and then what I do is, as well is some of the older films um, I've actually got on DVD. Um, and there's another row uh, up the back there. And then this was a recent edition. Uh, so this is Blown Away, the... PlayStation VHS, uh, sort of promotional VHS, and yeah, this one, absolute bargain of the century, paid 20p for it, um, and it goes for about £75 on eBay, so really, really chuffed to have that, and then the final shelf in this bookcase is my Xbox 360 shelf, so we've got all of my, var um, my variants of uh, Xbox 360, uh, so uh, this one was meant to be the arcade, um, but this one currently, this actually has a HDMI port, so that's not the, I want to get that one replaced with a genuine arcade. So the arcade is the one that doesn't have the HDMI port. Uh, we've then got, uh, I believe it's the Pro, the Elite, the um, Halo 3 edition, we've then got the original Slim. Uh, what I called the Slim Elite, uh, so this was the one that had the hard drive, uh, the silver trim around the top, um, and it's more of a sort of glossy finish on it. We've then got the Gears of War uh, Special Edition Slim, and then we've got my 360E on the end. So yeah, I think other than the arcade, uh, which I want for at the front there, um, that would be the last uh, Xbox variant that I would that I want to get for the collection. Obviously, if any other special editions come up and I'm able to get hold of them, I will always do that. And then also, just down the end here, we've also got the Xbox 360 HD DVD drive. Um, I'll be honest, I've never tried it, never tested it, because I don't actually have any HD DVDs. Um, I'm hoping to be able... I'm just going to pick a cheap one up as soon as I see one. 
um, just so that I can at least just test it. Um, but yeah. Then, moving on, we're going to get to the messy corner, as far as I'm concerned. Because this is basically a corner that I use for storing uh, different things. Um, but it, also here we've got my uh, Fallout 76 um, Power, Ar Power Armor Edition helmet. Uh, and Alone in the Dark Limited Edition. This is a Wii game. Uh, originally, I think I had it up the top there. Um, but moved it down. We've got my uh, PSVR complete in box. Uh, my Wii complete in box. Then we've got my drawers. So the way that I've got my drawers set up is that they've all got a purpose. So the top drawer, it's very jam-packed. But this has got all of my... Um, basically video cables in so you see here i've got a bag it's marked up as nintendo and if i get it out you'll see it's got component cables uh so this is this will work with the um snes uh gamecube and n64 um so that allows me to plug it into my uh capture card um, I've got PlayStation. Pretty much every console that I can get a component cable for, um, I will pick it up. And next drawer down is going to be my power supplies. Uh, so you see here, so I've got my GameCube. Uh, this is the one, that I, this is a cable that I use for my Japanese uh, consoles. Got N64, Xbox 360 Slim. Uh, yeah, so once again, everything's bagged up. Uh, marked up so that when I want to get the console out um, I just need to sort of grab the bag and put it in then we've got my controller box so this is all of the extra controllers that I've got what I tend to do is any of the consoles that I've got like the ones over here they all have the controllers with them so when I want to play them I can literally pick up the controller and the console put them on the desk get the power and the video cables out and then I'm good to go. So these are essentially sort of overflow, uh, extra bits that I've got. Then just a bit of an overflow drawer. So a couple of extra power supplies that I couldn't fit up the top there. We've got like the Wii. Um, I think we've got my, my Wii U one normally goes in here as well. I'm not sure where that's gone. I know I've had it out recently. Um, and then we've got my Sega collection as well. So this is the plugs that I've got. So you'll see on each of them. So that one's got 32X, we've got Mega Drive, and then we've got Mega CD. So they're all labelled up so that I am always collect, always plug the right cable in. Uh, what we got? We've got, I think these last two. So this is all my sort of ca um, camera accessories, and this is a bit of a junk drawer. So I'm not going to go in them, I'm going to keep them hidden. <laughs> and then we move on to the main bookcases. So let me just move my light around again. So, starting off at the top, we have got all of my boxed PlayStations. So, we've got the original PlayStation, PS, both versions of the PS2. Uh, this was actually a PS2 that I bought for my wife. Um, but yeah, we managed to sort of retain the box. So, that's the original box that it come in. Uh, we've got a box for PSP. I think no. So, the PSP is empty. The, that one's got the PlayStation in. That one's empty because I've still got my... PlayStation on the side there. <clears throat> We've got the Satin Silver uh, PS3. Uh, this is actually a Japanese variant. Uh, so, yeah, really chuffed with that. I think this needs um, a new disk drive in it. It does all work and everything like that, but I don't think it reads disk properly. Then we've got the 60 gig, um, which uh, that was... So what? that's actually a really interesting story with that, because when we moved into the uh, our last house, so that was the f house that we were in when we, when I first started the channel, um, we'd just moved in. The wife had uh, popped her head up into the loft, and she come down so excited. She's like, you won't believe what I found in the loft. You won't believe it. And I'm like, what? And it's like, just go and look. And then I poked my head up in the loft, and I saw that box sitting there. And I... I literally skipped a breath, <laughs> um, but went up there. The box was empty, unfortunately, but I made sure that I kept hold of the box. Um, even back then, though, I wasn't actively collecting, so I wasn't on the hunt for a, a 60 gig, 
but because I'd kept hold of the box, once I did start collecting, um, all I had to do was find the console, and I was lucky enough um, to find the console at a charity shop. Ended up picking it up for five pounds. Um, it is completely working, and yeah, I think I've gone through and I've replaced um, the thermal paste and everything like that on it. Done a complete clean, um, and it is in that box. I will admit I am too scared to use it. So yeah, unfortunately I haven't. But I've briefly used it to test it, but other than that, it hasn't got used. And then on the end there, we've got my PS4. Uh, so that is the PS4 that I picked up um, on day of release. Uh, it's the Shadowfall bundle. And I've actually got the Shadowfall uh, Steelbook uh, in the shelf there uh, with the other PS3 ga uh, PS4 games. Um, but the console itself is in the box. So, yeah, really happy with that. And then moving on to the gaming shell. So the first two shells we've got are my Mega Drive collection. And I put my phone away, so I can't tell you how many we've got. <laughs> uh, so for the Mega Drive, we've currently got 81 games in the collection. Now, a good portion of these are games that I've had since I was a kid. Um, what happened was, is obviously I was getting games uh, when I was younger, when I had the Mega Drive. And... Then, when my cousin come to get rid of his Mega Drive, uh, he actually then just gave me all of his games. And some of the ones that I know that he gave me were things like Jungle Strike, uh, Desert Strike, F-22. Um, I think most of them are all ones that I've picked up since. Um, Strider, that was another one. I think that was one of the early games that I completed. Uh, really loved that first ever game that I completed was on the Mega Drive as well um, it's actually behind these games and that's Cool Spot um, so yeah one, when I started collecting that was one of the early games that I wanted to pick up because yeah it had a real sort of nostalgia uh, meaning to me so yeah really chuffed with that obviously got all of the Sonics um, I was a, a massive fan of Sonic Love the original Sonic games. Um, played Sonic 1, 2, and 3. Um, actually, I've only completed Sonic 1 and 2. I've never completed Sonic 3 um, or Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic 3D, obviously, that was the that was Sonic's sort of swan song on the um, Mega Drive. Um, didn't really play too much of that. Sonic Spinball, I absolutely love that. Loads of people hate it, but I really love it. I... I really enjoy playing it, and it is a game that goes in quite regularly. Uh, Sonic Compilation. So this is actually a compilation of Sonic 1, 2, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Um, I, I originally picked this up at the boot fair, um, and it came with uh, no manual, but I managed to pick up the manual from eBay uh, a little while later. So that is now complete as well. So I think they're all complete, apart from Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, if I remember right, it's definitely missing the inner tray and it's missing the manual as well. So, yeah, it is something I do want to get this box replaced. Obviously, this is the original box that I had, or the, this is its original box. Um, it's a bit sun faded now. I don't know why it's sun faded because none of my games have ever been in the sun. Um, but obviously, I'm missing the inserts and everything like that, and they're very rare to find uh, without the game now. Then, obviously, we've got a couple of the Sonic figures. So we've got a couple of my... I've got my Sonic Super Sonic figure and my Super Sonic uh, plush. We've got one of the... Very, I think one of the only pop figures in my collection is the Sonic. Um, obviously, if I find one that's relating to something I'm interested in, I will grab it. Um, but so far, this is the only one that I've actually had any interest in adding to the collection. We've got the Sonic Money Box, which I think is... Yeah, it is official Sega. Um, and then just on the end there, we have got my 32X games. So haven't got too many of these. These are the games that actually come with my 32X when I bought it. Um, and yeah, I haven't managed to pick up any, any others yet. Um, then we move on to the Saturn. So as well as having a, another Sonic plush Guarding the Saturn games, which we're going to move move him off to the side for a minute. Uh, so yeah, I've got a whole raft of Saturn games. 
And for the Saturn, we have got 49 games in the collection. So along with a whole load of the PAL games, uh, we've also got a whole stack of Japanese games and as well as a couple of the ones in the big boxes, which are a bit of a nightmare because they're bigger than the standard Saturn games and they don't fit on this shelf. So I've had to put them laying on their side down there. This was actually a set that I randomly found. I'm just going to put it down here to show you. This was a set that I found at the boot fair. And uh, they've all fallen out. <laughs> so these are a collection of little Sonic figures. And yeah, at first I thought, yeah, they were quite cool. Uh, so that's the reason why I picked them up. Um, but when I actually got home, I actually found out that they're worth quite a bit of money. I think this set sells for about £60 now. Um, I paid nowhere near that. I think I paid like £10-£15 for it. And yeah, really, really happy to have that in the collection. So that sits up there. Unfortunately, I can't have it open and displayed while it's sat up there. But yeah, I like to... Uh, try. I'm trying to keep all of the uh, Sega stuff and the Nintendo stuff on their appropriate shelves. And then just down below, we've got my um, the rest of my Sega consoles, really. So we've got this is a Mega CD promotional VHS that I was able to pick up. Um, I've been looking at this for absolutely ages and was yeah really chuffed to finally get it for a good price. We've then got my Master System collection, uh, which is really small at the moment. I think we've only got 10 games in the collection. My Mega CD collection, which has got a couple of games up the back there as well. Uh, we've currently got 12 games. And then we've got my Dreamcast there at the end, for which we've got about 22 games. So, yeah, at the moment, these three consoles are probably my sort of on the lower end of what I've got. And it is something I want to change. Whenever I can, I will sort of pick them up. With the Master System, a lot of the games that I've got are currently sort of uh, unboxed. Uh, so they're just car only. Um, I don't see them too often, but when I do, they're either in really bad condition or um, just really overpriced. So I've got a couple of people that do come across them every now and then, so I do keep my eye out for them. I think all of these have been bought from either Dan or John, apart from Pac-Mania, which I got from CEX. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump right over to the other side, and we'll start off with my NES collection. So currently we have got uh, 21 games uh, in the NES collection. Uh, I think all of them, bar a couple, are uh, car only. So I'm just going to move this one down for a minute. So yeah, you'll see there we've got three complete in box. We've got DuckTales, which I actually bought a couple of years ago. Uh, Marble Madness, which we got from the Isle of Wight a couple of years ago. And then Snake, Rattle and Roll, which is actually a recent pickup, I think. Um, and then, yeah, up the back there, we've got all of my car onlys. Then we've got the Super Nintendo. So for the Super Nintendo, uh, we've currently got 30 games in the collection. Now, there's not 30 games here because most of the Super Nintendo games uh, are sort of car only. Um, and I've just basically put a selection of my favourites out on the shelf. Uh, most of them are in the set of drawers that we'll get to in a minute. But a recent addition we've got is the first um, complete inbox Super Famicom game that we've got in the collection, and that was Theme Park. Absolutely loved this game, and yeah, it was one that I really wanted to pick up and add into the collection. I am going to, I'm hoping to get hold of the uh, PAL version of Theme Park uh, for the Super Nintendo, and that way I can actually do a proper comparison between this and the PAL version, because as far as I'm aware, um, there is some graphical differences between the two. And then, yeah, at the back here, we'll see we've got uh, Super FX, Another World, Donkey Kong Country, um, a, a Super Star Wars. Um, there you go, I'm moving the light a bit so it's not shining. Uh, Star Wing, uh, Pilot Wings is another game I absolutely love. And the original Super Mario Kart. We've also got the uh, Game Boy, the Super Game Boy as well. Um, I don't tend to use this that often, because uh, as I say, I do all of my video capturing 
on the um, the GameCube. Then, next up, we move on to the N64. And currently, I've only got one shelf of the N64, so it's very crowded and um, packed in. Uh, this is definitely a collection that in the future I'm going to hopefully be able to split out onto a second shelf. Um, so currently, we've got 55 games in the N64 collection. That is a, I think, sort of very evenly split between um, complete in box and car only so yeah at the moment i've got all of my complete in box ones on display and then once again a couple of my sort of top titles um just here um but yeah whenever i can uh, i always try and pick up complete in box uh n64 games and then we move on to the biggest bit in well my not the biggest bit in here but my favorite bit in here and that is the gamecube so the gamecube has been one of the consoles that i've been really pushing uh for a complete power edition of and currently we have got 151 gamecube games in the collection now i believe it is it's about 342 if I remember rightly, on the GameCube uh, for PAL. Uh, there are a couple of uh, NTSC versions mixed in here as well. Uh, so I think the... Uh, if I go back here, I think it is. Uh, so we've got Luigi's Mansion, which is uh, NTSC, uh, and also the Mega Man uh, Anniversary Collection, which also NTSC. Um, with them, uh, what I will do is I will play them on my Japanese, because um, what I've also got is a freeloader. So essentially, this is a uh, boot uh, a boot disc that you put in, um, and it allows you to play multi-region games. Um, it works on any console, uh, so Japanese, US, or um, PAL. But as I've said, uh, with the NTSC to PAL games, or playing the NTSC games on a PAL console, um, it does tend to run fast. Then we move on to the other uh, console that I'm also trying to get a full set of, and that is the Wii U. So with the Wii U, we have currently got 42 games in the collection. Um, I think that is, I think there's about 140 games uh, for the Wii U, so we're, we're about a third of the way there. Uh, still got a long way to go, but definitely a console. Whenever I see them, I will always pick up Wii U games, whether I've got them or not. Um, I always just grab them uh, because what I've actually, what I'm actually doing as well, is is I am building up a little stockpile of uh, Wii U's uh, because I think in the future they're going to be it's going to be the console to have, um, and I can definitely see it becoming a bit like things like the Virtual Boy. Uh, where it is worth hundreds of pounds. Uh, so, yeah, that is why whenever I see anything Wii U, I will always pick it up. Then we move on to my DS shelf. So for the DS, we've got 128 games. Um, I think about 99% of them are boxed. Um, not all necessarily boxed complete, but definitely boxed. But also on the shelf, what we've got is we've got the Mario... Is this the 25th anniversary, I think it was? The 30th anniversary. Um, so I think they're pin badges. Then got my copy of Mario 2 on the Famicom disc system. So this is a different version of Mario than was released in um, PAL and US. Uh, this is what is known as Mario and the Lost Levels. Um, that was the original Japanese version that was released. Um, reason that we got the sort of reskin version of Doki Doki Panic was because Nintendo Japan uh, thought that it would be too hard for Western audiences, um, so they basically reskinned that game, uh, and that was kept as a, a Japanese exclusive uh, until things like uh, Super Mario All Stars come out. Then, um, as well on this shelf, we've got my. Um, Banjo-Kazooie 
uh, amiibo this was one of the first amiibos that i ever had um and yeah it just ended up finding a place on this shelf and then this is another thing i'm really proud to have in the collection so this is a pokemon moon um store display so this is a demo box or display box uh for the pokemon moon uh 2ds um i've actually got two of these but whenever i've looked them up um, I just can't find anything about them. So, yeah, not sure what their value is. Um, I would potentially look to sell the other one that I've got. Um, but, yeah, just really happy to have these in the collection. So, as I say, we have got uh, 200, uh, 128 uh, DS games. Once again, there is a mixture of uh, both PAL and NTSC games. Um, but with the, the DS, uh, it's not a problem. Then we move on to the 3DS. So I haven't got too many 3DS games because these don't come up too often. Um, but currently we've got uh, 33 in the collection. Um, and yeah, I'm actually quite happy because we've got quite a few of the Pokemon games. So yeah, I've been lucky enough to get quite a few of these recently. Um, I've got a couple sealed as well. So currently my copy of Pokemon Moon is sealed uh, because I actually bought Mo Sun and Moon at the same time and played Sun but kept Moon sealed. Uh, I think actually that might be the only Pokemon game on the 2DS that I've got sealed. Um, oh, there we go. We've also got Chibi Robo. And where's the, the cursed game? There we go, Teddy Together. That was the game that we play. Uh, I picked up in one of the recent Boot Fair videos. That game literally belongs to the devil. <laughs> it is scary as anything. Scarier than any Resident Evil game you will ever play. <laughs> and then, just on the end here, we've got my collection of Engage games. So, I picked these up a little while ago. Uh, we've got 10 games for the collection, um, as well as both the variants of the console. Uh, which, yeah, really happy with that. Then, moving over, uh, we've got the Wii collection. So, once again, these are double stacked. Uh, so, there is a row of games behind these, but I just don't have the room to have them all on sort of single shelves. Uh, currently, we have got 171 uh, Wii games in the collection. So, yeah, I... If I see a Wii game uh, that I haven't seen before or I like the look of, I will pick them up. But I will admit it's not a console that I'm massively keen to sort of stock up on. Um, I just don't... I don't like the motion control. I really don't. But we then move on to a console that I do absolutely love. And that is the PS1. So, currently, I have got uh, 212 uh, PS1 games in the collection. So, what I have done is these are all split out, just like with the Xboxes. So, we've got the Platinum titles here in alphabetical order. Then got my collection of demos. Then double discs. And then I've got Mortal Kombat on the end there, just because it's a, an odd-shaped case. Because it's actually in a cardboard case. So, yeah, that's a bit of a, a weird one. And then it doubles down here as well. Uh, so, yeah, I've got three shelves total of PS1 games, but I have got quite a bit of expansion room with a PS1. So I think I need to be uh, picking up some more PS1 games. But, yeah, as I say, it is a console. I love picking these up, uh, and whenever I see them, uh, I will always grab them. Then, following on from the PS1, uh, we've got the PS2. And once again, this is, I think this is probably the biggest um, collection within the games room. Uh, so we've got 481 PS2 games in the collection at the moment. Uh, once again, it's just a console that I just seem to find. Uh, whenever I go out, it, it's always, it's so easy to find PS2 games. Um, and a lot of them are all, I'd say a good, probably 80% of the collection are all franchises that I've heard of. So it's not, not all shovelware that you find. 
obviously it's not a a, a console that I'm sort of desperate to go go and complete. But as I say, whenever I find them, uh, I will. If I haven't got it in the collection, um, I will always pick them up. Then moving down to the last shelf in here, we've got the PS3. So currently we've got 238 games in the PS3 collection. So yeah, once again, this is uh, double stacked. I think the two end shelves are both double stacked. And then I'm trying to keep this, this shelf uh, clear uh, because obviously this is where I do all of my uh, game photography uh, when I put the pictures of the game cases in the video. So yeah, as I say, I absolutely love the PS3, really do. Um, I, I'm definitely more PlayStation than Xbox, um, but yeah. So yeah, I find the there's a couple of the, the PS2 shelves, a couple of the PS2 shelves and the last PS3 shelf are a bit of a pain to get to because obviously I do have a photography table uh, in the way, uh, but it is it's what I have to do uh, because that's all the space that I have. And then moving on to the last bit of the games room. Uh, so we've got a, another couple of set of drawers. Uh, the first one, this has got a couple of bits in I use for when I'm doing photography for the resale. Uh, then in here, it's a bit of a mess. But I've got a, a load of my Game Boy carts. Um, and then if we look down the side, I think this has also got... Uh, I think this is more just random bits and pieces in here. Um, some of my I think my Atari carts are all in here. Uh, they're underneath all that. So yeah, that, that draws a bit of a mess. But the next one down is a bit more organised. So this is where I've got all of my N64 and Super Nintendo carts. <clears throat> and then, yeah, under the bottom there, uh, we've got my... All my Game Gear carts, uh, I think for the Game Gear, I've got uh, 22 games at the moment. We've got my Super Fam uh, we've got my Famicom games, sorry, uh, Master System, and then some more Mega Drives. Uh, that is my my only ColecoVision game. Um, I don't have a ColecoVision to play it. Um, I just saw it at a boot fair and didn't want to leave it. Then the bottom drawer here is all uh, overflow Pokemon stuff. So this is stuff that I don't have room on the shelves to put out, um, but didn't want them just chucked in a box. Uh, then we've got a... Uh, so this is where I store all of my um, box protectors um, and inserts. So they go in there. This is a drawer of my handhelds. Uh, once again, these are all various different conditions. Some need repairing, some are fully working. Uh, we've also got my Commodore uh, tape drive. Uh, then we've got a drawer with all parts in, uh, and then a drawer with my tools in. And then just behind all this, I'll sort of squeeze around the back, and hopefully you'll be able to come out. Um, I've got extra... The, these are sort of extra consoles, so you'll see there I've got my Mega CD2, my SNES scope, um, and yeah, just a whole load of sort of different bits that I don't have the room to put out at the moment. So yeah, that is the games room tour. So give me two seconds, I'm just going to switch back to the other camera, and then we'll get everything wrapped up. So that is the games room tour for 2024. But before we wrap up, um, I just want to say I absolutely love doing these videos. Um, I really enjoy actually having the time to be able to go through the whole collection. Um, also, actually, before doing the videos, I will always, I'll literally, I pull everything out and re, re alphabetize and sort everything. So it's really good for me because I'm actually able to sort through the games and I see games that I completely forgot that I had that I'm like, oh, actually, I want to play that. So yeah, it sort of helps me build up a list of games that I want to play going forward. Um, I will say, I think over the course of this year, one thing I am going to look to do is to re-inventory the whole collection. 
uh, because I don't think my app is as up to date as it should be. Um, so what I've actually got, I've actually got the app that I have on my phone when I'm out and about. Um, I've also got a spreadsheet that I use. Um, it was it was it was set up before last year's game hunt uh, game room tour, um, and the idea was was that I would keep it up to date uh, with values and everything like that. But I've I've kept it up to date with the games, um, and that's where I've got the numbers for today. Uh, but I haven't kept it up with values, so it is purely now just tracking the collection. But between that spreadsheet and the app, I'm getting two different numbers. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, probably re-inventory everything um, with the app. But, yeah, I have to say, really, really enjoyed doing this. Um, and, yeah, really looking forward to getting ready for next year. Um, but I will say, um, over the next few months, we have got some absolutely amazing bits going on. Uh, so I think next week we are going to be doing, uh, we've got another boot fair video from the tail end of last year. Um, that's going to be a brand new boot fair that we've never gone to before. Um, and it proves to be absolutely amazing for games. We get some stonking pickups. Um, then uh, as well, so I've actually got all, uh, a whole stack of videos ready to go between now and up until about the end of April. Um, I've got one video which I'm having to split into two because it just ended up being so long um, and it is the biggest pickup that I have ever made. Um, not in cost wise but just sheer amount of new additions to the collection. Um, it is absolutely mental. I literally filled the back of the wife's car. That's how big it is. So hopefully that video I'm hoping will be out about mid-April. Um, and yeah, so we've got the new boot fair uh, that we're going to, uh, should be in next week. Um, I, I've got, no sorry, it's not next week, it's the week after, um, unless I don't manage to get next Tuesday's video done. <laughs> um, but as well, uh, the so when you see this, uh, tomorrow um, I should be back out at the Manston boot fair, uh, which that starts uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then hopefully on the Sunday, uh, we're heading back out to the new boot fair uh, that we went to last year as well. And yeah, so there's a, actually a couple of different boot fair videos that we've got coming up. Um, all of them are going to be new places that I've never been before. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that. And yeah, just some monumental pickups from uh, friends of the channel, uh, people that we pick up quite regularly. So I would say if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Uh, because you are not going to want to miss some of these game hunts because they are absolutely superb and yeah some really good games that we're going to be adding into the collection but with that said that is going to wrap up today's video so thank you so so much for watching today really hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you on the next one all right bye